Hey everyone, Wolflord Row here. Today we are discussing just who could have been the Primarch of the mysterious Firehawks chapter, the Legion of the Damned. General spoiler warning to begin, we are going to be discussing lore from across the Warhammer 40k universe, so you have been warned. But with that said, let's just jump straight in. Okay, so with our discussion regarding the possible origins of the Legion of the Damned, I thought, come on, we've got to have a little discussion at least about just who could have been the Primarch of the Firehawks. Now, in case you missed the last video, go back and have a watch before continuing with this one. But the reason it's worth having this discussion is the very intended reference to the chapter's gene seed. While the Firehawks claim lineage from Rebute Gilliman and the Ultramarines, certain defects and variations held in the Gene Seed archives on Terra speak against it. And perhaps even more telling, the Ultramarines have refused to acknowledge them as sons of Gilliman. So the question is, if not Gilliman, then who could have been the Firehawks Primarch? And look, before we get rolling, there isn't a right answer. It's obviously just one of those little open mysteries that GW leaves out there in the lore. But as always, they're fun to discuss and dive into. Now, the key things we have to go by here are the references to defects and variations in the gene seed, compared to Rebute Gilliman. So variations, of course, just means it could be any other Primarch. However, defects implies, well, just that, that there is some form of defect apparent. Now, this could be small or it could be large. But what it does help us do is rule out the Primarchs with the purest of gene seed, whose sons show no defects, however minor. So straight away, that rules out Lion L. Johnson, the first having one of the purest gene seeds still to this day. And surprisingly, also Alpharius, the Alpha Legion II possessing a strong and pure gene seed, despite their ultimate betrayal. Yeah, that's right, I said it. Betrayal. Now, this doesn't mean all the remaining have mutated gene seed, of course not. Many are extremely small and subtle, and have only come over time since the loss of their Primarch, despite still remaining largely uncompromised. And this brings us to the gene seeds with clear and evident degradations, or variation, but ones we can safely rule out the Firehawks from being connected with. Firstly, Lehman Russ. It would have been pretty clear if the Firehawks were sons of Russ, the Canis Helix is not easily ignored. Plus, if we really want to get pedantic, the name doesn't exactly scream Space Wolf. So Lehman Russ is out. And so too Sanguinius. While not so much physically speaking, the Blood Angels being renowned for their beauty, but for the effects of the Red First and the Black Rage, it would have been impossible for the Hawks to not display these in some way, and the rumours would have undoubtedly followed. The fact that neither of these are present in any story relating to the Firehawks means quite clearly that they were not related to the Blood Angels. And I think we can rule out the Sons of Ferris Manus. The flesh is weak would have been again very evident to witness. And I'm going to rule out Mortarion and the Death Guard here too. While the secret of the Primark project Belisarius has his hands on most likely remains completely pure, even the stocks of Death Guard gene seed on Terra is rumoured to have become completely corrupted. There's no way the effects of Nurgle wouldn't have been evident in even the smallest way. And on the point of the traitor Primarchs, do we really think the High Lords would have dared it at this point? I mean truly. Yes, it was a cursed founding, but still. 
so I'm going to rule out the rest of the traitor Primarchs. All save one, Fulgrim. Now again, it's highly unlikely, I know. But the chapter name Firehawks certainly has a phoenix element to it. The bird reborn from flames, as was Fulgrim often referred. And while Fulgrim's gene stock suffered early on, it was restored when Primarch was reunited with his legion. And it does suffer two small degradations or variances. One being the occasional cases of albinoism, white bodies and white hair, and also the sometimes development of violet eyes, akin to their Primarch. So these variances are definitely small enough to go completely unnoticed in an operating chapter, but they are something that sets them apart when compared to Gilliman's gene seed. So while highly unlikely, I'm going to leave Fulgrim as an intriguing possibility. So who else do we have remaining? Korax, Jagatai, Vulcan, and Dawn. So Jagatai Khan, a largely stable gene seed, save for the introduction of the genetic material from Chagoris, which seemingly passed down the wild savagery and thirst for war. So some differences, but nothing too major. And I could easily see a White Scar successor chapter being named Firehawks. That doesn't sound too out of place for me. But I think the inherited style of warfare ingrained into their genetics is just too different for the Khan to be truly considered. So while still maybe being an outside possibility, I'm going to rule the Khan out. On to Vulcan. Well, right off the bat, Firehawks certainly works with the Salamanders. And there are several variations in their gene seed that would mark them apart from Gilliman, enhanced durability to extreme heat, radiation resistance, and increased cellular repair, inherited obviously from Vulcan. I guess the real question would be whether the Firehawks had developed the onyx black skin and red eyes of the Salamanders. You would have to assume not for them to claim Gilliman's lineage. So if that was the case, I think Vulcan could remain a possibility. If they did exhibit the same onyx skin and red eyes, then quite obviously, that's a no. But we'll keep Vulcan as a possibility. Corvus Corax are ah, the Raven Lord. Well, they certainly fit the defects and variations in gene seed. Both the Betcher's gland and mucronoid organs no longer function for the sons of Corax. And with their skin whitening and hair darkening with age, they certainly fit the bill for variation and defect. And the physical appearance alone would be enough for the Ultramarines to doubt their kinship. Then we have the obvious link between Raven and Hawk. So Korax is another possibility. Do the Firehawks sound like they fit the mold of Sons of Korax, stealth warfare and hiding in shadows? Well, no, not really, especially with their bright yellow armor. But I don't think that's enough to rule them out. So Korax remains a possibility. And finally, Rogal Dawn. Well, the Imperial Fists have lost the use of two of their organs over time, the Betcher's gland and the Susan membrane. So they're definitely ticking the Gene C defect and variance box and their appearance wouldn't be too dissimilar from Sons of Gilliman. So that does help make an explanation of why the Firehawks may claim Gilliman as their gene sire, because by looks alone, they wouldn't look any different from Ultramarines. Now the name Firehawks doesn't exactly scream out Imperial Fists, but we have seen some unusual chapter names before, so this is no reason to discount it. So Rogal Dawn definitely remains an open possibility, and for me, could well be the favourite. 
So the possibilities I have come to. Fulgrim, Vulcan, Korax, and Rogal Dawn. Which one of them may be the Primarch of the ill-fated Firehawks, and thus the Legion of the Damned? As always guys, what do you think? Who do you think may be the Primarch of the Firehawks, and thus the Legion of the Damned? Do you agree with my possibilities, or do you have another Primarch in mind? As always, drop your thoughts in the comments below, I love to read them. Huge thank you to all my subscribers, your support really means a lot to me, it truly does. And if you're new, please consider subscribing to help the channel grow. And if you enjoyed this particular vid, then why not drop a like on it too. But with that said, I am off, and I'll see you all again real soon.